Welcome back to Friday Beyond Spotlights. This is Patrick Zhang. I'm a local Hong Kong businessman, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. On Friday Beyond Spotlights, we invite prominent guests to share their insights into current affairs, business, innovation, and culture. Today, we're very pleased to have with us Winnie Tam. Winnie is a leading lawyer and a leader in public service. She grew up in an environment where Western music and Chinese literature and art were part of her daily life. Among the many roles in public service, past and present, she finds her current chairmanship of the Hong Kong Palace Museum one of the most exciting and challenging. Winnie, welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you for having me. So Winnie, should we start with arts and culture? Arts and culture is a universal language. How does the Hong Kong Palace Museum contribute to telling the world the Hong Kong good stories? Hong Kong has been given a very special role under the country's uh, 14th five-year plan. Um, we are very excited that Hong Kong has been assigned that particular role, and Hong Kong Palace Museum is apt to, to make Hong Kong an international cultural hub of uh, different cultures, including Chinese culture. So the Hong Kong Palace Museum is not only just a museum of Chinese artifacts, it is a cultural museum, as its Chinese name, Hong Kong Bu Gong Man Fa Bun, suggests. So we look forward to hosting international exhibitions as well as um, artifacts from, from uh, the precious um, collections of uh, Beijing's uh, Palace Museum. And uh, in some of the special exhibitions, we have juxtaposed the uh, modern as well as the ancient and East and West uh, to um, make good the East meets West theme of international cultural exchange. Apart from the Hong Kong Palace Museum, how can the local arts and cultural sector contribute to telling the world the good Hong Kong stories? With the West Kowloon Cultural District, uh, we see um, a number of venues being, uh, having been uh, up and running, and uh, they include a Sichu Center, which is uh, mainly for Chinese operatic forms. And then we have Free Space, which is a, which is a black, bo black box theater um, where imagination can run wild uh, with a theater, music, uh, and um, all sorts of movements, uh, like dance performances. And West Kowloon offers all these opportunities, uh, plus the M Plus Museum and, uh, and uh, the Hong Kong Palace Museum now. West Kowloon is the place for, I, for, for artists and uh, audience to enjoy um, the essence of East meeting the West. What are the unique attractions of Hong Kong that can attract and retain more international arts and cultural practitioners to come to Hong Kong? Um, we have two languages as our official languages. So, not only, not only have the pool of talents uh, who are Chinese speaking, we also have access to all the English speaking pool of talents. And Hong Kong has been um, excellent in accepting and embracing uh, overseas talents as well as Chinese talents from the mainland, even from Taiwan, and, um, and also, uh, of course, local talents itself is a mix uh, because Hong Kong is such a metropolitan city. We have um, all these leading artists in Hong Kong working with Hong Kong people and um, overseas artists and bringing great performances and uh, curating excellent exhibitions in Hong Kong. So I'm very happy to see that you are confident that Hong Kong will continue to be able to attract these, uh, these talents. Mm -hmm. How do you see the developments of the art and culture scene in Hong Kong? Rather than predicting which way it will, will go, I, I would very much like to see a better ecosystem being developed um, of um, arts and culture uh, uh, practitioners um, so that they can grow and flourish uh, within this ecosystem. The second point is that um, obviously uh, the corporations, the private corporations in Hong Kong really will have to step up 
We've just seen a very good example of companies stepping up in sponsorship of the arts, haven't we? There was this uh, Symphony Under the Stars, which was uh, staged um, outside uh, the, the Tamer, and it was quite spectacular. But even more spectacular is, of course, the orchestra itself. And I think uh, Swire has done an excellent job in uh, bringing free music for all of Hong Kong to enjoy. And I think that's a very good example of how corporations can participate. It's wonderful to see everyone out again, especially mm, in, the, in the open air. The atmosphere and, uh, was uh, unbelievable. What do you say to people who comments that, oh, Hong Kong is a cultural desert and you cannot really uh, uh, have good business in the arts and cultural sector in Hong Kong? What do you say to, to those naysayers? Hong Kong is anything but a cultural desert. Um, we see Hong Kong bringing up a world-class uh, orchestra, world-class performances in ballet, um, international award-winning art groups. Our uh, performing arts school is uh, one of the best, if not the best in the region, where students from across the region come to study. I've seen uh, recent musicals, for example, um, and uh, these are musical performances put together by the younger generation. They obviously have all the musical influences of the West, but um, its language is Chinese, its dialect is Cantonese, and its um, artistical expressions are a, a mixture of West and the East. Actually, your interest in intellectual property law is actually related to your passion in music. Maybe you can uh, explain that to us. When I was trying to find an area of interest as a law student, it became natural to, um, to think of uh, anything that relates to music because th that is so part of my life at the time. And I became very interested in the uh, commercial exploitation of, of music and uh, what sort of rights uh, can be born of a musical work and how do you exploit it and how can other people share uh, the music uh, with or without um, uh, having to sort of license um, the, the use of the, of the music. So Winnie, apart from music, I know you're also interested in classical Chinese literature, arts and history. How does art and culture influence your personal philosophy? Um, my mother uh, was a teacher, my late mother. She has a lifelong passion uh, pursuing uh, the classics, poems and verses, and, and she also practices calligraphy. So I think that is a very strong influence on my part, particularly when I was young. And um, so I had this um, deep interest in the language to start with. I believe that art and culture is inseparable from the language. Um, once you have an interest in the language, then you would become interested in the history um, of uh, the, the people who use the language. And, and then art and culture is just part and parcel of that history. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that wonderful story. I think it's coming from a special place in your heart and talking mm. about history, talking about how your mother has helped shape who you are today. Thank mm. you for that, Winnie. Thank you. So Winnie, many of us know that you are a well-recognized intellectual property law expert. Um, is your experience as a senior lawyer in those areas relevant to your public roles, right? Especially in a role like chairmanship of the Hong Kong Palace Museum. Um, the value of our service lies in our judgment of uh, situations of facts and circumstances and our ability to apply the law to the facts and circumstances. I think um, in my job as, for example, the chair of the communications authority and now and, and subsequently chairing the performing arts committee in the West Kowloon Cultural District and now as the uh, chair of the Hong Kong Palace Museum, I find that uh, this judgment is often uh, called upon and uh, I'll have to um, be able to grasp the situation and be able to prioritize issues and see and, and tell the important from the unimportant 
and the more urgent from the less urgent and be able to exercise my judgment and uh, exert an appropriate amount of leadership without meddling into management, hmm. for example. And all these are important in performing public roles, I think. Um, Winnie, in terms of for our younger viewers out there, what would be advice that you would give to the next generation? What would be your words of wisdom? I, I find grit is a very important quality, perseverance. And I think it is very important for young people to, to know right from the start that the, that, that the road in front of them, the path in front of them is not going to be all flat and easy. The next is open-mindedness. It is about not limiting your own opportunities in life. And another quality is um, gratefulness. I think gratefulness um, is a mindset and help you um, have hope for what you aspire to have. Another piece of advice uh, I would often give to young people uh, is self-reliance. You will find that you are the best help to yourself. Thank you, Winnie. We'll be right back after this short break.